Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. It's a beautiful Friday morning. Well, we're right in time for the weekend. So how are you? How is your weekend looking up? Anyways, on today's breakfast show, we're looking at several hot topics, one of which is talking about the planned protests and the potential security threats of the protests. Much later on the show, we'll be discussing Senate in Vice Dangote and NPCL and others over alleged economic sabotage. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as the top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. And that is by Mae West. She was an American actress and singer. And this morning, her words are, you only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. I think that is a very self-explanatory quote. And if you're a young star, you definitely know what they say, YOLO, you only live once. And what does that mean? It means that you should seize every opportunity in doing what is best for you. So seize every opportunity to have fun, seize every, every opportunity to ensure that the people around you feel loved and cared for. So you only live once. The memories that you have, you know, that's what is paramount for you. So if you do your life right, if you live your life right, once is enough. That is living a life without regrets. Um, most times people start to regret things that they did not do. So you look back, and you say, I wish I did this, I wish I did that, or I wish I did this better. Well, if you do it in the first place, you would not even leave that life of regrets, wishing you did certain things. You know, uh, most people, when they are old, and you ask them for words of wisdom, most times they will tell you, just live your life. Live your life to the fullest. Live your life the best way you can, your most authentic self. And they tell you, do all of the things that you want to do because when you're old, you probably do not have the strength anymore and you start to wish you did everything. You start to wish you turned every stone. You start to wish you opened every door. You start to wish you took all of the opportunities that came your way. And that's what this quote by Mae West is saying this morning, that you only live once. But if you do it right, if you do it the right way, that once is enough. Nobody's promised um, another life. We don't know if there is another another life or there's an afterlife after this when you come back again but you see this one that you have right now it is important that you make the best of it so what are you doing today how are you ensuring ensuring that your life is what you want it to be that you're living right are you going out are you having fun are you getting that much needed rest that you should be having well now is the time to take care of yourself take care of your mental health take care of your body and take care of the people around you so you only live once but when you do it right without any regrets without any stone or turned, you will make sure that that once is enough all right that's it for our quote of the day moving over to some top trending stories this morning it says nigerians well we don't know what nigerians want that's what um apc governors are saying Governors from the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, have stated that they do not understand the reasons behind the planned nationwide protests scheduled for August 1 to 10, 2024. Imo State Governor Hope Uzodima, PFG Chairman, invited protest organizers to discuss their grievances directly to find solutions. Uzadima urged Nigerians to avoid demonstrations at this time due to ongoing issues like insecurity, economic challenges, and efforts to improve living conditions. He called on citizens to be patient and not be swayed into causing unrest, emphasizing national unity and the need to address current challenges collectively. The APC governors expressed a commitment to improving the nation by creating jobs and enhancing prosperity for all citizens. They advised against protests to avoid exaggerating existing issues like insecurity, economic hardship, and social unrest, stressing the need for collective efforts to overcome these challenges. Now, 
I understand what Op Hope Uzodima is saying, but the funny part is these same things that you just talked about is the reason why people are wanting to protest in the first place. We're talking about insecurity. We're talking about lack of jobs. We're talking about economic hardship. And you're saying that people should not protest at this time because of the insecurity on the country, because of the economic hardship. Meanwhile, that is even the reason why they need to protest in the first place because things are hard for everybody. Things are hard for Nigerians. Nigerians are not living in the best conditions at the moment. So if you're saying you don't know what Nigerians want, then that begs the question that are you not in Nigeria? Don't you listen to what the people are saying? At the end of the day, what democracy is all about is to ensure that you listen to the people. It's government for the people and by the people. And so, if you're saying that you don't even know what Nigerians want, that means you're not close to the people. That means you don't know what we want. That means how, how else can you even help us if you don't know what we want in the first place? I'm sure um, what Nigerians are asking for is just better living conditions. We want quality education. We want good infrastructure. We want good healthcare system. We want to feel secured in our homes. We want better welfare packages. These are several things that we want, and then that's what we're asking for. And then, obviously, a better economy. If the economy is dwindling this much and inflation is at an all-time high, then how do you expect people not to say anything? I mean, I'm never really one for protests. I don't think um, everyone just wants to go out in the streets and protest, carrying placards. But regardless, there are people who want to make their voices heard. And if they're doing it in the best way possible by just stating the facts and you're not listening to them, then sometimes they have to take the bull by the horn and maybe it means going out to protest. So saying that because of certain things right now in the country, such as uh, insecurity, economic hardship, people shouldn't protest, that is, even, that is counterproductive because that is even the reason why they need to protest in the first place. So you saying that is not going to help matters. Instead, you should be talking about ways to ensure that Nigerians have a better living condition. If you're talking about job creation, if you're talking about sorting out the economy, yes. But aside that, aside saying it, it shouldn't just be empty promises like we've been used to. It should be you showing measures. It should be you showing the policies that you want to put in place to ensure that we'll be fine, to ensure that our economy will be better. If you're just saying, we will do this, we will do that, when is that day going to come? When are Nigerians going to say, yes, I love my country, I am proud of my country, my country is flourishing, and we're not thinking of how to move away, looking for greener pastures in other countries. Every single day you go to the airport, a lot of people are there, and they're looking for a way to, in our language, jackma because they feel like Nigeria is not just the best right now. And then they can't even maximize or utilize all of their potentials here in Nigeria. The economy is not so great. Imagine businesses finding it hard to do business. There are so many businesses that are closing down at this time because they cannot stay afloat. There are families that go to bed hungry because they cannot put food on their table. There are lots of school children that are out of schools because they cannot pay the fees or buy the books or even buy uniforms. There are people who are living on the streets because they, we do not have affordable housing for these people. Our roads are depleting, so many potholes, that in fact our cars are now being bad due to the potholes on the road. So what are we talking about? Transportation is so expensive because obviously fuel, which is the essential commodity to, be, and to make sure that you move from point A to point B, is expensive as well. The cost of doing business is expensive because of this same commodity. So what are we talking about? If you have any form of illness right now, having to even buy the drugs, the medication for you to feel better, you might not even be able to have that money. If there was an emergency situation right now, are you sure that you're going to go into the hospital and you'll be treated and you're not scared that you might just die? So what are we talking about? There are so many issues that can be highlighted here in Nigeria. 
And I know that we come here and, you know, we talk about all of these issues. But the reason why we even talk about it in the first place is because we want it fixed. And that's why we're calling on the government. We need you to fix these issues. You can't just sit there in your high horses and say that you do not know what we want. Of course you know what we want. We've been... We've clearly stated what we want. And all we just need you to do right now is to meet us somewhere. Let's start somewhere. Let's start fixing our nation. Let's start fixing our economy. So don't say you don't know what we want. Instead, say, how can I be better? How can I serve you better? So the All Progressive Congress, you are the ruling party right now. Please help us fix our nation. And of course, if you are doing the right thing, we will commend you. We're not just going to come here and berate you all the time. No, we will say, yes, we can see that our economy is working. We can see that this party, this ruling party, they are doing everything in the best interest of Nigerians. And so we will commend you. But of course, you have to give unto Caesar what is due to Caesar. If you do not deserve that right now, we are still going to speak up for what is right. And that is our fundamental human right to be able to have that freedom of expression. I'm hoping that we'll have in Nigeria that one day we would say, yes, we've been through all of this in the past, but we have a better country, not just for ourselves right now, but our, for our children unborn, the generations to come that would also inherit this land. So hopefully we all start to put our hands in the plow and we start to do the work right now. It starts with me. It starts with you in your little corner today. Anyways, let's move over to another top trending story. This says, Oshun Delta find Meta Google for tax evasion. Tax authorities in Oshun and Delta State have fined Google Nigeria $150 million and Meta Platforms Incorporated $200 million for alleged non remittance of withholding tax from 2020 to the present. The fines are related to withholding tax not paid on digital services provided to content creators and entertainers in the States. Both companies were given a 14-day notice to comply with the tax demands with penalties including potential prosecution for non-compliance. The state's internal revenue services emphasized that withholding tax is required by law and must be remitted to the appropriate authorities. The state's tax authorities have been in contact with the companies since October 2023 without resolution and further legal action may be pursued if compliance is not achieved. Withholding tax is a must. Of course, if you're in any nation, or if you're in any state, you have to, of course, pay taxes because that is how we build a nation. That is how you even have a place to come and do business in the first place. So with Google and Meta having to avoid these taxes, I'm wondering why, because you even have, you have enough money and you are making money, if you're making money from these states, then you should be able to pay back. So why are you withholding the taxes? I know there are so many people that try to, um, uh, you know, do their books in a way to ensure that there's some form of tax evasion, but that is wrong. That is illegal. You have to pay your taxes. It is important that you pay your taxes, especially if you're getting money from that said country or from that said state. So with Meta and Google, I think they just need to ensure that they do the, the needful. If they've been having conversations with you since October, right now you should be looking at ensuring that your books are better. Because another thing is, if you're not paying your taxes, of aside the fact that they might take some legal action against you, but they might, we might just even say we don't want you anymore because you're coming here, you're taking front, funds from here, but you're not willing to pay taxes, and which is just how many percent of your revenue. So I think it's important that Meta and Google start, look at this, ensure that your books are right, pay your taxes, and everybody's fine. Our final top trending story says five workers dead as building under construction in Lagos collapses. A building under construction collapsed in the Maryland area of Lagos at 3.49 a.m. on Thursday, resulting in the death of five workers. Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, LASIMA, confirmed the collapse and reported that five adult males were found dead while four others were rescued alive. Search and rescue operations were conducted with the help of LASIMA and the Lagos State Fire Service, and an excavator was deployed to assist in the rescue efforts. 
The victims, all site workers, received pre-hospital care at the scene before being transported to the hospital. And the State Environment Health Monitoring Unit was contacted for the disease. Building collapses have been a recurring issue in Lagos, with similar incidents reported in recent weeks due to factors like flooding. First question is, who are the people giving out these permits? Because, like we said, building collapses have been a recurring issue recently. You've been hearing of so many buildings collapsing. There was one that even happened in Abuja with school children in it. You've heard of several ones here in Lagos. So why are we giving permits to buildings that we're not sure that they can withstand whatever it is? Because if you're saying flooding, you should be able to prepare for that. If it's wind, you should be able to prepare for that. So the building, I think it starts from the, the, the management there, the environmental management. Because why would you be giving permits? These are people's lives we're talking about. Imagine five people are dead. First, I'd like to say that my heart goes out to the people who lost their lives in um, this building and the families as well. Like we pray that um, God gives them the fortitude to bear this loss. But look at this. These are people's breadwinners that have lost their life just because of negligence. Because I don't think there's anything that we can say aside negligence. It could have been anything, I understand. But these are preventive things. It could have been prevented and ensured that, you know, no lives would be lost. A lot of times, most of these contractors, the people that build these houses, they build with substandard products. And before you know it, it will tell the test of time. Of course, sometimes this building will collapse. It might not collapse immediately, like this one, which is still under construction. Sometimes it might be much later when people have even moved into these houses. But I think we need to look at what the building permits are looking you cannot build a 10-story building in a small land with a very shallow foundation no it has to be deeply rooted it has to be down on the ground so that you know it can stand the test of time and the building is strong and then you're using the right products standard products not substandard products that you're just using to cut costs, cut corners, and ensure that you maximize your profits. That is not how you maximize your profits. You do not maximize your profits with people's lives at stake. People have died right now, which is quite sad and unfortunate. Anyways, like I said, my heart goes out to, um, you know, these people who have lost their lives. And we just hope that the Lagos state government, not just the Lagos state governments, even the federal government, every state government as well, you know, start to look at this in their individual states and ensure that they're giving building permits to only the buildings that deserves it. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. And when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.